everybody, welcome back to the channel. I thought today I would continue our family milk cow series and I was struggling a little bit with how to try and organize it because it's not really a step-by-step -step process with getting a family milk cow. There's a whole lot of things that have to happen like literally all at once. So it was kind of hard to break it down, but hopefully you'll get sense of it. It'll probably be more than one video unless we want to be on here for like an hour. Anyway, if it seems like I'm going off on a tangent on anything, hopefully I'll be able to tie it all in at the end. But let's get started. So when Alan and I were discussing what we would be looking for for buying a family milk cow, one of the first things that should be on everyone's mind, which is kind of the same with buying anything, is to have a budget. You need to have an idea of what you're going to want to spend for your cow. You need to have an idea of what you want to spend on the things that go along with having said cow. Oftentimes, buying the family milk cow is the cheapest part. It's all the other expenses that come afterwards that really start to add up. So when you're doing this, you need to definitely think of not only how much you want to spend on your cow, which is not up to me to say how much you should or should not spend on a family milk cow, that is completely up to you and what you're looking to spend, what you're willing to spend. People kind of price family milk cows, however, and so it's really difficult to say, this is how much you should be spending on a family milk cow. Another thing that you're gonna wanna keep in mind too is the cost of putting up a shelter or fence if you do not have those on your property. You need to make sure you keep in mind the cost of feed. You're gonna have hay, grain, other things. You're going to have bedding costs. You also need to keep in mind costs for veterinary expenses, any medicines. You're going to need to keep in mind that you have to breed your cow to get a calf to continue lactations year after year. So there's a cost of that. If you're going to hire somebody to breed your cow, if you're going to buy a bull, whatever. Now another thing you're going to want to factor into your budget is also your electricity because if you're in the great north, Minnesota, Canada, anywhere that's gonna go below freezing, if you have a water tank out for your cow, you're gonna need something to keep that tank from freezing. So if you're running an electric tank heater, that's going to really, really work on your electric bill and raise it up. Another thing to think of as far as electricity goes is if you're going to be milking your cow with a machine, you're going to be running electricity for that. Now the machine itself is also something that you really do need to consider in your budget for your family milk cow. If you're going to be milking it with a single cow machine, whatever it is, used or new, then you have to be able to budget that in. If you're gonna be milking your cow by hand, you still need to budget in your buckets, strainers, filters, that kind of stuff too. So definitely something to remember. Okay, so now you've got a budget set for how much you wanna spend on a family milk cow. Next thing is, where do I get a family milk cow? Now there's a lot of different options, so I thought we'd go over a few. If you're looking for a purebred animal, you can go to any number of the breed associations. They all have a website. They list breeders, so more than likely you'll find one in your state. Might be kind of a distance to get to them, but if you're really set on having a purebred registered animal, the breed associations are gonna be probably your easiest step to finding a purebred animal. One downside though to buying a purebred animal, typically, here again, it's going to be more difficult to find that animal because they might not be available as, they might not be as widely available nationally as kind of your regular standard mixed breeds or whatever. Another thing is they're going to be more expensive. Anytime you buy a purebred registered animal, they will be more expensive. So figure that in. Another thing, maybe you have somebody that has a family milk cow already. Maybe they have more than one that they wanna sell. Talk to them. Or talk to them and find out where they bought their family milk cow from. Maybe they bought it from a local dairy farm. Maybe they bought it from an online group. Talk to them because they're gonna probably have an idea locally where you can get a family milk cow at. Another place which I just recently discovered and there's thousands of them out there is a family milk cow group on Facebook. There's different groups, pages, 
there's a ton of them out there. And from what I've seen, there's a lot of them on there where they will place ads for family milk cows for sale, or you can do an in search of ad in your area. And I think you'll be able to find someone that maybe you don't know personally, but they can direct you to where to look for a family milk cow in your area. Now, as far as sale barns go, I would kind of shy away from that. Unless you're talking about like a dairy farm herd dispersal sale, because a lot of times just your regular weekly sale barn sales, they will have dairy cows there, but typically there's a reason that those cows are there. They're being culled for a reason. But a herd dispersal sale is because the dairy farm is no longer in business, so they're selling their entire herd. So you can get, a lot of times, you can even contact the owner, kind of tell them what you're looking for, you can go from there. So sale barns are not necessarily out of the question. I mean, yeah, you do run the risk when buying an animal from a sale barn that they've been exposed to pathogens at the sale barn, but that's not always the case. And if you've got a really well vaccinated cow, that shouldn't be an issue to begin with, but something to keep in mind. But yeah, so sale barns, I would really shy away from though overall, unless you're looking at a herd dispersal sale. Next would be your local dairy farm. If you've got someone near you that milks cows, they're an excellent resource. However, freestall cows on large farms are not going to be those really friendly, like our girls are. These girls in a tie stall barn are handled much more around their body and stuff than a freestall cow is. Oftentimes a cow that's milked in a parlor, they don't get their bodies touched and handled as much as a tie stall cow would. However, there's always an exception to the rule. You can have people that have very, very tame, friendly freestall cows. So I can't say that you should keep away from large farms. It really depends on the animal. And that's kind of the guiding rule for any of this. It really depends on the animal itself, whether it's breed, price, where you're getting it from. If you don't like the cow, it doesn't matter where it's from. But anyway, a small dairy farm such as ours, that's a tie stall barn, our cows are handled a lot. And for me personally, I am always willing to answer questions. If you've got problems with the cow you're buying from us, I wanna know because I wanna help you succeed with those cows. And we're very particular about the reason we sell our cows. So if you're going to a local dairy farm and they don't wanna answer any questions, they don't want you to contact them after you buy the cow, maybe shy away from that too. I think that if you're selling a cow to a family, you should be willing to be available if they have a question or concern. Because a lot of the times, people that are buying a family milk cow, it's their first time doing it. So you gotta help them out. Now, another place that you can look for a family milk cow, it's Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, anything like those, those sale sites. But be wary, especially on Craigslist, of cattle jockeys. Those are people that they will buy a cow that looks decent, possibly from a sale barn, and they can fill you so full of BS about that cow. You think you're buying a cow that their kids milked, and it's not the case. It's a wild cow, could be potentially dangerous. Alan and I have also experienced that when we started dairy farming. We bought cows from a cattle jockey and it was not a good experience. So do you want to share your experience with a cattle jockey and buying cows off of Craigslist? Well, when I first started, um, we found some cows a guy had, and I believe he was milking cows at the time. Um, we went out and looked at them and they looked like decent cows. They were out in a lot. And the ones we were looking at, now that's been quite a while ago, I think they were um, either going to be like first calvers or some of them were, uh, they were bred but they um, were dried off, you know, they were in their dry period so they'd be calving pretty soon. I bought nine of them I think. And he was telling me about how they're standing the barn good and oh the kids are, kids can pet them and they can do all this and that. Um, so I did buy them, I brought them home, put them in the barn. Now there was a few of them that um, that wound up being good cows. I think there was what, out of the nine, I think there was three, maybe four that we kept. Um, but the rest of them, I don't know if they'd ever even seen the inside of a barn before. 
Uh, I had four of them in stanchions here. I think I kept them for about two weeks. And every time you'd come in the barn, they would just fly back and just, they were just nuts. Um, the one cow did calf and she wound up, I don't know what was wrong, if she had been sucked on or what, but she had no milk. Um, so that was just a fiasco. Um, I would recommend if you can find a farm that's milking cows or you know where you can actually see them being milked I mean we've had people buy cows from us um, when we're milking they come they see how they are you know um, how they behave with people milking them or this and that because you don't want to buy one that somebody's getting rid of because she can't be milked because she's kicky or something like that. So um, I guess, you know, you can run into the same thing at a sale barn or something, you know, not saying every cow is gonna be bad, but a lot of times there's a reason that they're there. <laughs> so I really hope that when people are selling a cow to a family, that they're being honest. So I hope. Now, if you're buying a cow off of Craigslist or wherever, Go see the cow in person. That's huge. Go see the cow in person. Check their condition. Check how they are. You get a sense of their personality. If possible, milk that cow. Make sure that the minute you bend down to go milk her, she's not going to kick your head off. So it's definitely important to see the cow in person, see if you have a good match there with that cow. Because there's just certain people that don't get along with certain cows that somebody else might love. If you're buying a family milk cow, wherever you're buying it from, always ask lots and lots of questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions because you think it might sound dumb or stupid. Ask your questions because I don't want to say there's no such thing as a dumb question because I mean, literally there's people out there that think brown cows give chocolate milk. But for the most part, ask your question. People are going to be rather People would rather you ask the question now than you have a problem later down the road that could have been avoided if you'd asked that question. So always ask lots and lots of questions. Um, another thing would be um, if the cow has horns or not. Um, if you have buy a calf, you would probably preferably like to find something that's pulled, which means the genetics, um, they don't even grow horns. Uh, that's starting to be more popular in the dairy breeds now. Um, and that's the ideal way to go. But if you do wind up with a calf um, that has horns, a lot of times on the calves you feel like a little horn bud starting there. Um, definitely talk to a vet or someone knowledgeable about getting it dehorned. Um, it's just safer. Um, and as far as a cow, if you find a cow that has bigger horns already, um, they can be harder to dehorn when they get older. Um, it's just a lot better to do when they're young. If, if you do have one with horns, um, I guess if the cow is gentle enough, it's probably not that big of a deal unless you're going to have it with other animals, other cows or horse or whatever, because they have those horns and they know how to use them. Um, if they want to push on another one for feed or different things like that, they can jab the eyes on the other animal or jab the, you know, jab into the skin or um, it can be dangerous for another animal and even a person you know if they if you're up by them doing something and they decide to swing that horn at you it's just it's just a uh, kind of a weapon they have um, so I would definitely shy away from horns or look at getting them dehorned I know it's not a it's not a pleasant job but it is it is a necessary job um, another thing you know that might be worth kind of looking into if you're buying your cow from a farm is if they have little kids running around. Uh, might sound kind of weird, but 
uh, these cows, pretty much all the cows in here, the kids run up and down front, sweet mangers running up and down the walk. They're loud. Yeah, they're loud. Um, it doesn't really bother them. But, um, you know, if you've got cattle like my grandpa, for instance, when he milked, he was pretty much the only one here. Um, the cows knew him. He had a routine, and that's what it was. Uh, when we started helping here when I was a little kid, and you started having kids moving around and stuff, those cows, they weren't used to that. They were freaked out by it. You know, they were nervous. They were jumpy. Um, so not saying every situation is going to be like that, but and it's not the fault of the person that has the farm. It's just what routine those cows are used to. So like I said, if you do have a farm where there's little kids running all over the place, the cows are going to be more used to noise, motion, that kind of thing. So that might be something else to kind of keep an eye out for when you're looking for a cow. Now one question you have to ask yourself when you're thinking about a family milk cow is do you want to start off with a mature cow or would you rather start off by raising your own heifer calf? Now pros and cons to both obviously. Now your upfront cost of buying a cow is going to be more expensive than buying a calf because typically in our area you can buy a heifer calf for around a couple hundred dollars if you're not looking for anything super special. Whereas a mature cow can run you upwards of over a thousand. But when you consider the cost of raising the calf, you can't really raise a calf to adulthood for $1,000. Raising a calf to adulthood can cost upwards of $2,000 or more. So just because the calf's cheap up front, those underlying costs can get you. They're really cute and adorable, I know. But their immune systems are really underdeveloped. And raising a calf that you've taken off the farm into a new environment is exposing its underdeveloped immune system to different pathogens and diseases. It's very easy to lose a calf before it's even a year old. That's one of the downsides to raising calf. Even experienced calf growers will lose calves every now and then. Another thing to remember too, if you're gonna start off with a calf versus a cow, before a cow will give you milk, she has to have a calf. So for a cow to calf, she has to be pregnant. For a cow to be pregnant, she needs to be bred, either by a bull or artificial insemination. So that's something that you're gonna have to figure out to do, how you're going to do that. Whether you're going to hire someone to breed the cow, you'll breed it yourself, or you'll have a bull on the property. We'll get into bulls and breeding more in a different video, but it's still something that you need to think of if you're going to raise a calf. Say you're buying a calf from somebody you don't know, you do have the potential risk of buying a calf that was a twin to a bull. Now when that happens, usually the heifer is infertile. She's a free martin. Not always, but they're not good betting odds. Now would I suggest a heifer over a cow? No, I wouldn't. Heifers are just as inexperienced as most new family milk cow owners. They've never been milked before, they're sore, they're unsure of what's happening. It's not usually a good thing. If you buy a mature milk cow, at least one that's already calved once, you have a cow that's experienced the lactation, she's experienced what it's like to be milked. That would be what I would go for over a heifer or a calf, but it's up to you. So to sum up this video, just a few things to keep in mind when you're looking for a family milk cow is you need to make sure you're staying within your budget that you set. Thank you. You have to keep in mind that the initial purchase of your family milk cow is most often the cheapest part of the whole thing. And all the other costs add up afterwards. So make sure you keep that in mind. My recommendation would be to buy a mature pregnant milk cow, not a calf, not a heifer. To sum up as far as testing, my number one test that I would have done on any cow I'm going to purchase would be for Yoni's disease. And to finish it off, like I said, whenever you're drinking a raw milk, you do have to realize that there are some risks involved with drinking anything that hasn't been pasteurized. But that's life. There's always risks in life and it's just what you're willing to do.